Hey, good afternoon. From uh, 1966 to 1974, the Swedish car maker Volvo gave us these cool boxy little 140 series cars. This is a 144S 1971 car that spent most of its life across the pond and now it's here for sale in Michigan. Clients have hired me to do an inspection, pre-purchase inspection, if you need that kind of service. 800-301-3886. We do it all over the country. Boy, this is a neat car. I love the turquoise blue color. I love the fact that designers in 1971 thought that Chocolate brown and turquoise were an awesome match. Isn't that cool? These cars were billed out really as like the safest built cars of the day. When you consider here in America, we had the awesome Corvair. This car uh, featured crumple zones. Um, early on, it featured uh, four wheel disc brakes, which was kind of cool. Power, power brakes as well. I'm gonna go through the car. I've got it up in the air. Already photographed the whole car. Got a couple hundred shots of it. I think what makes this car unique, besides its very cool color combination, is um, what a straight survivor it is. That's all factory original paint. That hasn't been touched. And uh, how do we know these things? Got about 40 or 50 still photos such as that, 3.8 and 5.8. And these are all over the car. Twos, threes, mill thickness. That's a dollar bill's thickness versus about two or three dollar bill's thickness. Regarding physical condition, you can't have paint survive and look this nice its whole life without having a few war wounds. Car showing a hundred and 30, just over 130,000 kilometers. That would be about uh, times 0.62, so about uh, 80, about 81,000 miles, 80, 81,000 miles, if my math is correct. Uh, some of you engineer type, help me out. Rear electric window defog. So let's hop underneath this and see what it's what it's all about grab the flashlight and we're gonna do it all in one take start up here with suspension and frame rails no crumple or crush in the lower core support frame extension there and no hook marks or pull marks in the die holes no evidence of anything ever being done, pulled, hit, hammered, etc. Insides of the fenders are in very nice shape. Factory spot weld still present throughout, front and back. The back of the car looks just like this, only it doesn't have a motor there. If you notice, there's some yellow crayon marks still visible on some of the suspension points which is really cool. Some survivor marks, I would imagine. I know they have to get cars inspected over in Germany. I think this car spent some time in Germany. You can see that those front uh, dust shields pretty much enclose the entire rotor, which is really, you know, far better looking than the domestic version, but those calipers look new. Some grease buildup on the bottom of the engine. Not sure if or where any oil is coming down in any major fashion, but my guess is no, because I've been jacked up here for a couple hours. Drove the car to this spot and there's not a, I can't really even see a drop on the ground. I'm not gonna say there's not because who knows. Some of the brake lines have been serviced. The engine bay is super tidy. I'll show that to you in a minute. But, but the floor tubs and the splash areas all look fantastic. The unitized rails are really, really in good shape. 
little if any roll on the uh, pinch weld on the driver's side in the back. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Well, there is some seepage there near the gearbox and it looks like it's past the rear main seal on the engine so don't know where that dampness is coming from but probably the the gearbox itself but again nothing on the ground where it was parked uh, Firestone 165 15 tires they've got nibs still present in the tread I didn't measure them stock 15 inch wheels painted metallic silver with the uh, small caps look very nice so tires and wheels are in really good shape and uh, a peek down here in the wheel well this is kind of what is seen all around the car very solid sound deadener no patching front or aft of those uh, wheel splashes some paint peeled is all spot welds very present this uh, pinch weld looks great tied into the floor looks fantastic coming down here and then a little better shot of the floors I would bore you and show you the other side but it's virtually identical you would not see any difference at all and again I have still photos to show the client who put us to work here for mine Exhaust, a single exhaust going all the way back has some uh, cosmetic decay. Somebody changed the muffler and then there's a resonator back there and the resonator's got a mouse hole, or a rust hole rather. Not a mouse hole, well a mouse could have got up there. And uh, so it's got a rust hole right in the bottom of it and it's gonna need to be changed. This pinch weld right here is rolled just a little bit where somebody might have put a floor jack under there. These little dots, symmetrical spot welds and they're supposed to be there. Rear end housing looks like it's in good shape. Nothing on the ground underneath it. Uh, the control arm bushings appear to be in good shape. I don't think they've ever been serviced. I didn't see where there was an issue or they need to be. So that is pretty much the entire underbody. And again, still photos for the consumer who hired us to look at thoroughly and examine. Bottoms of these uh, splashes on the fenders, they're in excellent shape. There's a little bit of decay in the splashes. These door corners are beautiful. Might be the nicest door corners I've ever seen. All the door handles operate properly. All the door skin lips look like that. All the jams look like that. And the doors all close very nicely. So the rear end is more of the same. There's a little bit of uh, putty on the uh, wires that go to the gas tank that's peeled a little bit, but I don't see, I think they're just kept, uh, keeps the wires retained. I don't think it's a, any kind of a leak issue. There's just so a few hairline scratches, a few small door dings. This is actually some splatter on the paint that needs to be cleaned up. It's, uh, probably somebody started an exhaust or tailpipe in the building and it sprayed a little oil, but all that comes off. Um, hairline scratch here, hairline scratches here. Often I'll fill out a uh, exploded view to kind of highlight the scratches, dings, and dents on the vehicle. There's a few hairline scratches in here, one here that's been touched up. So we're beginning to get the picture of what I'm seeing, there's a little bit of light blue uh, touch-up or drips on top of the paint. I don't want to rub on them, but there are just a few of them right there. So coming around the cosmetics, I'll show it more inside here because things will show up better inside than they do outside as far as flaws go. This uh, front grille, we'll talk about the trim in a minute, but all the trim is essentially in really nice shape. There's a small little ping there in the grill, a little bit of wrinklage right there, but the grill essentially looks very nice. Headlight bezels look nice. And 
these uh, marker lights front and aft are in very nice shape. It's a little scuff that was touched up on the edge of the fender. The hood's in pretty straight shape. I don't really see any signs of hail damage or issues like that. The hood aligns very nicely. It aligns very nicely. Sunroof opens, that's cool. Electric rear defog, sunroof, power brakes. Did I say all that? AM, FM, radio. Here's a touch up up here in the drip rail. This is just a little mark on the paint that'll clean up. So again, cosmetically speaking, there are just a few little, whoops, a few little touch ups like this going on. Hairline uh, scratches and whatnot kind of happening bigger ones here on the on the deck lid where somebody probably sat a cardboard box full of razor blades these are aluminum bumpers I believe and they're polished pretty decent they could polish up even better those are the original rubber strips got a hitch and uh, wiring for a six plug harness so I guess you could pull your horse trailer with this if you wanted to I don't know what the GVWs are. We have a few little small scratches right here. That'll I'll show more outside. See them? Can you see them? This side of the car has a little bit of physical damage. So let's kind of cover that right now and then we will get it off the jack and take it for a ride and go through the interior along this wheel well. A few little scuffs and scrapes. There's a gouge right here. Somebody caught a garbage can or something similar pinched it in between the wall and then took it down the door here. I'll move my flashlight in a minute so you can kind of see better. And uh, there's a spot right up here high also that goes into the passenger door. See it here and then here and then here. So that little bit of damage exists but from right here it's really tough to see. We'll look at it in the sun and kind of get a better view. I personally would leave it alone because this paint is so original and so neat. I just don't think I'd touch it. I maybe would brush touch it a little bit and let it go. So there's a little more chippage down here, here, and a little scratch right here. Kind of a little bit of an inny maybe. You can feel it a little bit. And a little scratch there. Can you see it? So I'm picking on the car a little bit. But I imagine it's been very difficult to keep this paint in this nice a condition for all these years. This baby is old. So essentially, it's in gorgeous condition for a survivor. That's what I would say. Look at these door jams. They all look just like this. Just like that. Backside, same way. No rot, decay, no repairs, nothing ugly. Great um, original Volvo service manual. I might have to take that with me. I own two of these cars myself. Not the 140 series. So that tweed's in really nice shape. The carpet's in nice shape. I don't think anybody ever smoked much in this car, if at all. There's some spots on the package tree carpeting. The dome light does work. It worked when the driver's door came on. Door latches work inside and out. These, uh, these are stealthy, stealthy seats. There's some extended mirrors to pull your horse trailer with. These are reclining um, and then they lock in place with that lever. So you can actually go camping in this car, I guess, huh? They also have an adjustment for soft and firm. Controls there to open up for airflow. I would guess this is an original carpet kit. You probably would see it better if I put a light on it. I would say it's in marvelous shape. There's a hairline scratch in the vinyl. The dash looks great. Not too chalky. The uh, sun visors are, uh, the padding seems swollen and just a little bit of yellowing. 
but not much. Seats are not torn up, ripped up. Door panels are very nice. I uncovered these lights and took pictures of them. They look good. I'm positive if they're exactly matched. Our ID tag is up here on the firewall, mounted properly. There's our body tag, uh, engine cast, engine stamp. I recorded all those numbers. Dual SUs, downdraft setup, looks really nice. Belt, original yellow fan, and the inner structure though is uh, borderline fantastic. Oil is clean and up to par. All the pinch welds down there look really nice. These are definitely some older hoses and whatnot. ZF gearbox, steering box. Somebody replaced the battery. Upper core support, all factory spot welds. Turn this that way. Here's some more of that uh, blueberry stain type touch up or whatever that is. Hood skin's in great shape. No evidence of any bending or swelling or anything unusual. I searched the windshield over in great detail and I cannot find an obvious rock chip. I'm gonna say that there's a couple minor chips just because I can't find one and I don't want anybody to be mad. But it's possible that you'll search this windshield over and you too will not find any rock chips. All right, we're gonna bring the Jack down all in one fell swoop. Get in and fire it up, take it for a drive. And then we will take a last look at it while I'm back here. Very cool. The trunk. Again, nothing short of spectacular. All factory spot welds look fantastic. No separation in that skin lip. No, no issues with the deck lid folding being bent the tubs are in wonderful shape i pulled this mat back pulled this plywood out and that looks nice floors look nice original style matting this is cool as get out it's your little volvo lunchbox slash gas tank so it's going to probably rattle around in the test drive because i don't know what secures that Here's the original jack, I presume, and here's the original toolkit, and they are all in there. I took them apart already and took photos. Matching spare wheels been painted, and that's a Michelin tire, not a Firestone. That doesn't match. This little seal could seem to be put back on. We'll pretend like that was already done. Jams are in fantastic shape. And again, the shot underneath of the muffler, there's a hole right there. There's a hole in my bucket. My mom used to sing that song to me. But the rear suspension looks good. Here there's a little, um, little dough that just needs to be kind of pressed back in place. That's where the harness goes, um, at least for the trailer lights probably. These wells are in really great shape. Lights and bezels, these are in super nice shape. So, I like to find a few things to complain about, but honestly, there's not much going on with this car, which is probably really, really good for the buyer. Blue and brown are beginning to grow on me. I might actually like it by the end of the day. I love the blue. Down this quarter, there's about two or three small door dings. They're gonna be super hard to really see. But uh, general, again, some general cosmetic Deterioration, very light pitting or patina on the door handles. These mirror gaskets look original. They don't look like they've ever been off. Same with the vent window rubbers. All the side glass is clear. I rolled these up and down. I'm gonna put them back down because we're going for a ride. So we have covered 
the glass, the body, the paint, and the trim, uh, the interior, the engine bay, the trunk, the wheels and tires, the floors, uh, front suspension, rear suspension and rear axle, and uh, we're doing the wrap up. Parking brake lever works. I pulled it accidentally. All right, hood and trunk are down. Turn the key forward and we've got, we've got lights. They go on, oil and amp, and they go off. I should have mentioned that the engine's cold. I did move the car here earlier. And, uh, allow somebody access to get out the door and then I moved it back to where it was so when I was arriving today it was in this spot triple odometer appears to be gaining ground Turn signal right, so my turn signal left. Hey, can you tell me if these turn signals are working up front? Is that on? Going on? Headlights? Thanks, man. All right. Yeah, if you would, I would be grateful. Here's my brake. Brake. Turn signal. Turn signal. All right, thank you so much. You gotta love a little free labor once in a while. All right, <laughs> thanks. All right, if I can find reverse again, we're gonna be off. There it is. Engine's got a nice little putter. I listened to it earlier. Didn't see any unusual smoke or hear any knocking or ticking when I started it up. Definitely not uh, moving for me. Morning lights are clicking and ticking. Kind of cool, we got a speed minder. I'm going to take it to, we're only going to go to 120 today. Kilometers. All right, I'm gonna pull a whole shot. Holy cow, we are out of gas. We're not going far. Speedometer is working. Clutch, I'm gonna back off the gas, on and off and on and off, and see if I can get that to pop out of gear. And I am not having any success. Brakes, hands off the wheel. Don't hear any clunking in the suspension. Brakes applied pretty firm. I'm driving through a little bit of loose blacktop. Very sorry about that. Okay. Take off and get some speed here. Again, braking without my hands on the wheel and car 
brakes nice and straight, pedal feels good. Seems to run really good. Synchronize first gear. Uh, there's our fuse panel underneath. I just pulled the box to the door off there. The glove box opens and closes and latches as it should. Cigarette lighter is pretty clean. That thing might have traveled through Amsterdam a time or two. We'll take a run down the road here one more time and then we'll call it a day. Engine's got nice acceleration. There's not really any... Uh, second gear there. There we go. First to second's always better than first to fourth, isn't it? One more uh, time we're going to put the brakes on. And, uh, nothing really, uh, nothing really to talk about there. Maybe a slight pull to the left, but probably not. Alright, let's look at the clutch engagement and then I think we will, uh, We'll wrap it up. Right there, right there, right there. Uh, I'm going to say half to two thirds up through the pedal travel. That's where the clutch is engaging. Horn works. The clock, I don't think, is uh, happening for us. All right. series Volvo 144 because it had four doors like the 142 was the two door so uh, they, didn't, they didn't make it really complicated back there back then the 120 was the car that preceded the 140 series and these boxy cars man Volvo built a name out of selling boxy cars didn't they people who love these cars just love these cars I'm one of them sustained a 60 mile an hour hit from the back while sitting in a light and she opened the door and just walked out of the car walked out of the accident scene the bumper was pushed right up to the back of the back seat all right quick pan around the vehicle and then i'm gonna shut down uh, i'm not sure if the gas gauge is working to be honest because i'm still on zero but these things probably get pretty good gas mileage I did mention the doors all open and close super easy. The trunk and the hood open and close nicely. Here's my parking brake, and I think it's working. And the brake light does go on. I'll put that fuse cover back on. I swore I set that at nine o'clock. Maybe that maybe that is working. Final walk around in the sunlight. We'll peek underneath it. Once I shut the video down, I'm going to let the car run for another 5 or 10 minutes and just see if there's any other heating issues to report. Down here, down low, I had mistakenly told you back on the left, uh, left quarter panel, but here's those door dings right here. Here's one there and there's one there. You see those? Outside these little scratches and touch-ups and even this sphere down the rear door, they just, they don't really grab your attention. I think if you try to fix them, I think then it would draw your attention to that door because uh, it'd be hard to match this color and this texture and this fade in my opinion. So I think I would have to be the kind of guy to leave well enough alone in a car like this if it were going to be mine.
wrapping it up.